Thanks, Joe. So uh, let me kick off by saying again, hello to everyone. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, Professor Hugh Summers. I'm director of the Research Network uh, and I'm based in, in Swansea University. Uh, various people you, you'll see during the afternoon, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them introduce themselves as, as we go. There's just two people I, I want to introduce um, on my left, on my screen anyway, uh, Joe Griffiths. Uh, Joe is our uh, network administrator, so she's a really important person, keeping it going day by day. Uh, and then also for today, uh, Becky Waldron has joined us uh, to help out and, and run the Zoom meeting. So. Thank you, thank you again, Becky, for, for doing that for us. Okay, so let me, uh, I'll go to share screen. And you should now see my slides. So hope you'll see a PowerPoint slides there. Um, okay. Oh, sorry. So, can, can I just remind everyone, could, could you go to mute, please? I, I'm picking up a bit of uh, volume there. Thank you very much. OK, so this is our, our first meeting of, uh, depending on you know, how well you know us, either the New Engineering Research Network Wales or those of you who, who knew, knew us from before, the, the NRN, the National Research Network, the phase two of that. So uh, these are uh, research networks that run through the Welsh Government's Sir Cymru Research Programme. Uh, and we'll hear a bit more about that in, in a short while. Uh, for today, this is the first meeting of our phase two. So you can see there three things really uh, that, we're, that we're aiming to do today. Re-engage with those of you who, who know us well and we're involved in NRN part one. Uh, introduce new people to, to you all. Uh, the first network ran with just three of the universities in Wales, Bangor, Swansea and Cardiff. Uh, I'm delighted to say we now have all eight of the higher education institution in Wales as partners within the network and we'll introduce uh, people from those, so it's just introduced to those. Give you an idea of what we want to do over the next 18 months, which is, is the funding uh, phase of, of, of this current round. Uh, and then finally, base, the most important thing actually, uh, is to engage with you, invite you to send us your ideas, uh, and help us sort of shape where this network is going to go over the 18 months and beyond. So really, it's, it's a start of trying to get your ideas and, and your input. Uh, so a very brief uh, sort of then and now. Uh, so again, for those of you who, who might not be aware, the National Research Network in Advanced Engineering and Materials was set up by the West Government, as I've said, through the Sir Cymru programme. Uh, in 2014, it ran for five years, uh, and it was there to build research capacity and excellence across Wales, particularly through collaboration, so to bring us all together. It was a major investment, £7 million, uh, so we funded many, many PhD studentships, 62 research projects, and around that whole programme of networking events and workshops. So, to say, uh, a major investment by Welsh Government and, and from that you know we generated uh, many millions of, of further research funding out of those pilot projects so it's successful uh, and because of that or partly because of that success uh, in 2020 just just before or end of 2019 just before uh, the whole Covid pandemic came upon us uh, Welsh Government sort of re relaunched the networks a very different funding level this time. So we, we now are in this phase, which takes us through to March 2023. Uh, really, it's a phase where to maintain the networks, that the key thing was to maintain all the linkages uh, that we had to keep the networks running. And during so 21, 22, to develop a longer term strategy. So, so what we're about at the moment is bringing in new partners, as I've said, already we've done some of that uh, and really to sort of campaign for further investment plan out look at our long-term strategy and, and uh, implement that as, uh, for beyond March 2023 and, and as I say that today is really the start of that kind of planning. Hugh is there any chance to go to full screen mode Hugh? Oh sorry I hadn't realised I was uh, yes thank you Richard sorry for that uh, actually let me I'm going to do that so it's it's not in uh, display so you that should be pretty full screen thank you very much um so before i hand over uh, to, to our next speaker i just wanted to 
take a few minutes or a minute or two just to sort of set the scene. Um, so obviously where we are now, we're, at, we're post Brexit. Um, I'm going to be optimistic. We're sort of getting towards post COVID. Um, we've got relatively new governments, both in Westminster and in uh, Cardiff. So uh, we've got new government plans for, for innovation and research, both at Welsh and UK level. Uh, and you can see the links I put here, the UK government's plan for Wales and the Welsh government's programme for government. And we'll put links to these on our website as well if you haven't come across them. Uh, so we're at a point where there's a lot of change. There's a lot of flux. Um, people are, are now looking uh, at short, medium and long term uh, planning and strategy for research, investment and funding within the UK. Uh, so we're really, you know, in a completely transformed research landscape. Uh, and as you can see, I put there on the slide, you know, I really, when I refer to research, probably I should really refer to innovation, because certainly in my conversations and experience of the last few months, uh, the focus is very much on innovation, not to say that research isn't there, but, you know, it's, it's innovation and research rather than research and innovation in many ways. Um, so I think whilst the network this time around, uh, you know, we're in this, this intermediate phase of sort of 18 months funding and we don't have the funding we had in the first round. I think we are in a really, really um, opportune, opportune moment here that the network has experience, we have capability, we have all of our members. And so we are in a really good position uh, to come together, present a really coherent and compelling case for engineering research in Wales and to feed into these uh, the, these strategies and planning plans that are currently being made. So, you know, we, we are at a good point in time and we have the resources, I think, uh, to really try and influence uh, the, the landscape going forward. Uh, we've made a start to that. So the other document you can see I've put on the right here, making the case for investment in Welsh research. This is a document that the three NRNs, the three networks, life sciences, no carbon energy environment and ours, the engineering one, uh, we've put this together in the last few months. It really um, encapsulates what we did in the first round of funding, the successes that came from that. Uh, and it really starts to make the case of, of why those networks made a difference, how they made a difference, uh, and, and obviously putting them forward as, as vehicles to continue making a difference in whatever future funding schemes that we have. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing at that point. Uh, is my, my short introduction. Uh, and. I'm going to go now and, and introduce uh, Leanne Llewellyn, who's uh, here representing uh, the Sir Cymru programme. So it's Leanne who we, we liaise with uh, through Welsh Government, uh, as I said, through, for our, 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 through our funding programme. Um, so, yeah, let me hand over to you, Leanne, and I, I think you should be able to just share screen when, when you need to on, on the green button at the bottom. Okay, thank you, Richard. Hello, everyone. Okay, I'm going to share my screen and hope this works. Right. Oh. Sure. I can't seem to do this. Click on the green button and then find your slide deck and then um, click share. I can just see you. If I click on the green button, I can just see you and it's not going to ah, push. Try, try now, Leanne. I've just done the multiple participants. All oh, right, okay. Right, so again, share. Excellent. Okay. Here we go. I can see myself rather worryingly. Okay. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, can you see can you see the slides? Yeah. 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 Okay, that's great. Okay, hi everyone. So um as Richard said, I'm Leanne Llewellyn. I'm heading up um this is the full circumry programme at the moment as it happens, but my original role was the, the post award side. Um, my colleague Delif Morgan, some of you may know quite well, has recently moved on, so we're um, pretty big, big shoes to fill there, but I'll, I'll do my best. This is just a quick whistle stop tour of the main highlights of the programme to date. So Welsh Government um, started the circumry initiative in 2012, and it was the initiative of our first chief scientific officer, um, Faisa, sorry, Professor John Harriet, where the investment saw um, a strategic uh, need for research chairs and also the establishment of the research networks throughout Wales. And as Richard says, um, the success of the networks does speak for itself. 
Um, the first phase of the Sir Cymru was very much focused on building scientific excellence in Wales. And part two, or phase two, as we like to call it, was very much focused on building capacity in Wales. Um, our current Chief Scientific Advisor, Professor Peter Halligan, um, published this Leadership Foundation paper, which highlighted that um, to be competitive and leverage research council funding, um, Welsh, Welsh universities needed more than 600 posts to be sort of to achieve 5% funding. So it was quite a tall order. So this saw um, approximately 100 million in the programme to date from Welsh Government, um, Higher Education Funding Council for Wales, Universities and the European Regional Development Fund by UEFO. We also used um, European Commission Horizon 2020 funding um, in synergy with Marie Curie co -fund funding um, to sort of build our capacity to a really good level in Wales. So to date we funded 12 research chairs, 150 fellows, over 340 postdocs and 11 rising stars and the programme has generated over 180 million in research income into Welsh universities. None of this of course would be possible without our fantastic independent evaluation panel. The Cymru programme is very much focused on scientific gold standard excellence and any competitive funding bids that we run are evaluated for that level of excellence by your independent panel of experts who cover a wide range of topics. Um, we really do ask a lot of the panel and sometimes you know that the turnaround of um, review is, is quite remarkable so we really couldn't be where we are without, without the panel. I should say that our funding envelope um, has always been had to achieve a mark of 7 out of 10 to be considered but over the last few rounds, we have seen the level of competition just rise, which is a reflection of the, the challenges with the research funding lab, landscape at the moment. And the last call, the lowest um, mark that went through to, to achieve funding was 8.7. The bar is, is set really high and it is actually, does actually seem to be getting higher. So my obligatory map showing that we do fund um, a wide range of projects across all of the Welsh universities. And I am pleased to say that we have recently funded a uh, social science um, piece of research in Cardiff Metropolitan University, which was part of our tackling COVID call. Um, we've brought in capacity and excellence from over 29 countries, should actually be 30 now because um, there's somebody in Argentina on the programme as well. So here are uh, just an example of some of our research chairs. Um, press award, um, John Attack in the Medicines Discovery Unit in, in Cardiff are just remarkable. They've brought in over 30 million already in um, Research Council funding um, through to the likes of uh, Palmer Edith in Swansea University, who's brought in 30 million um, and established the Centre for Integrative Semiconductor, Semiconductor Materials. Never say that. And of course, some of these chairs have direct links to um, policy strategic policy requirements within Welsh Government. Just a quick um, few of our fellows just to show the wide range of research that we do fund. Alison is looking into bee immunity, uh, Karen works on glaciers, uh, Georgina works with our second um, Chief Science Advisor for Wales, Julie Williams, on the genetics of Alzheimer's and Sudagar, um, who's recently left um, unfortunately, but he was working on catalysts for water treatment and renewable green food well. So a wide range across all smart specialisation areas. Phase three of Sir Cymru was launched by our current Chief Science Advisor, Professor Peter Halligan. And this was very much focused on building collaborations between academia and, in, and industry and bridging that kind of gap that we have. Um, there were various calls uh, surrounding infrastructure, looking again at capacity building and looking at short term strategic partnerships um, for knowledge transfer between industry and academia and to date um, these have been hugely successful even though they've only been running for a few months. As Richard said we were fortunate to get some money to um, re-establish the, the NRN from this tranche. It wasn't as much as we would have liked and it is only given the NRNs um, the, the, the funds to fund a project manager and one or two other members of staff just to keep those collaborations going. 
there is hope by um, this, this injection of funding that you can continue to sort of uh, build collaborations, put forward research projects and secure funding um, together as a group. As I said, the three national research networks are now fully back operational and the success of those was evaluated in our first year can we uh, one report, which I'm happy to send to anyone if it requires. Um, just very quickly, I know we, we're pushed for time. We've also run two previous calls, which were quick turnaround calls over the last two years. One was the Enhancing Competitiveness Grant aimed at infrastructure awards. And there were 91 applications with a request of 5.9 million out of a 1.2 million pot. So again, this will show uh, the level and you know the, the challenges with the funding landscape uh, currently. Our tackling COVID call again was hugely successful. Um, two tranches of this. We had um, a first bid of 1.3 million and a second of 1.6 million. And again, um, we had a huge, huge amount of uptake in this. A total request of 8 million out of a funding envelope of, of um, <clears throat> 2.9. And again, as I said, the, the level of scientific excellence the bar was, was very high. Just to give you a quick overview, um, and to show that these COVID calls, the level of science is fed directly into the technical advisory style and also into SAGE, so it's directly influenced both UK and Welsh government policy with regard to the COVID response, and some of it has been quite high profile and um, hit the news on, on various channels. Um, there's just some slides and some other activities. I'm um, sorry we haven't got time to go into that all today. I was just, yeah, a quick whistle stop to where I hope that helped. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank, thank you very much, Leanne. Uh, and I, I apologize to all the speakers. We have tried to get a, a compressed program um, and, and keep us on Zoom for not too long. So I, I am aware that I'm, I'm, I'm forcing you all to be quite short, but, but thank you very much. Um, and it, as I said, if you said before, you know, if you put questions, I know Leanne has to, has to leave before the end of the meeting, uh, but, but again, we, we can forward questions through to her and I'm sure she'll be very happy to hand, answer offline if needs be. So, so thank, thank you very much. much Leanne. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to move on next now to introduce uh, uh, the, the range of, of partner organisations that, that we now have in, in the research network. So we have a steering, uh, a steering group, and on that steering group, each one of the member uh, universities ha is represented. Uh, so I'm just going to go through those now, uh, asking everyone in turn uh, just to introduce themselves, say who they are, where they're from, uh, and if you could just say one or two sentences about, you know, um, what you're bringing to the network from from your institution and I, I should say I meant to say at the start and um, today when I'm using the word engineering I, I'm using that in its its broadest sense so so engineering in in the context of this network is is sort of paraphrased to mean engineering technology applied science so you know it covers very broad spectrum okay so uh let me bring up my my little crib sheet here. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start with Swansea, not because I'm from Swansea, but uh, Professor Hans Science, who, who uh, is, is our group member from, from Swansea, I know has to leave uh, early. So, so I'm going to let Hans go first. So, so over to you, Hans. Uh, thank you very much, Hugh. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as you already said, uh, Hans Sienz, uh, my current role is Deputy Executive Dean of the newly uh, formed Faculty of Science and Engineering at Swansea. And I think you, uh, you've made a very good introduction uh, in the sense that uh, we brought science and engineering together. And <clears throat> one of our new schools is actually called the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. So it's really in the spirit of interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary work across a range of, of many topics. And, and just to highlight a few of those, uh, uh, we certainly are interested in, in a number of areas such as energy, uh, solar, wind, tidal, hydrogen, whether it's generation, storage, distribution, through existing projects, uh, specific flexes as we, uh, and capture, just to mention some. Net zero is, is very high uh, on our agenda as well. Uh, carbon capture, transport, foundation industries via projects like Switch and Rice. Uh, we have extensive work in, in the environment, sustainable living, glaciology, blue economy via projects like, uh, for instance, CCOMS. Uh, yes, the world goes digital, so no surprise, digital is another focus of the new faculty. 
bringing together activities on uh, from computer science, engineering, law, uh, uh, in, in areas such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, modeling, digital twins, virtual qualifications, uh, and projects here, supercomputing Wales and the new initiative, uh, the Data Nation Accelerator. Uh, we are active in materials, development, characterization, understanding through uh, uh, projects and activities like the Institute of Structural Materials, Smart, uh, AIM, and the Nanomaterials Lab uh, at, at Swansea. Um, one other point to highlight uh, is manufacturing, uh, whether it is smart manufacturing industry 4.0 additive, uh, the group of printing and coating, compound semiconductor, so the uh, collaboration with IQE, work in robotics, cobotics, uh, and also human-centered uh, artificial intelligence uh, and col uh, collaboration, for instance, through the astute uh, program. Um, key is also skills, uh, whether it's from outreach, work-based learning, all the way to accredited degree programs, degree apprenticeships, and NGDs. Uh, we are currently participating uh, in three doctoral training centers uh, uh, in artificial intelligence, enhancing human inductions, uh, uh, through data and doctoral training in industrial coatings. So a wide range, uh, it's not complete. I'm still finding my feet in the faculty and learning out about uh, the other aspects the faculty is doing. So I, I do apologize if uh, somebody feels I have missed uh, uh, his or her uh, topic out, but uh, more, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, encouraged to see this uh, restart of the NRN and I, I'm very much looking forward to working with everybody. Thank you, Hugh, back to you. Thank you, Hans. Thank you very much. OK, so I'm going to go through now in, in alphabetical order. So uh, next is Andrew Evans of, of Bristol. Thanks, Hugh. I think you were going alphabetically because Albert Howe becomes first. <laughs> Sorry, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm Andy Evans. I'm the head of uh, physics at Aberystwyth. Um, engineering, teaching and research in the physical sciences, at least, uh, is in the Faculty of um, Physical Sciences and Business, um, where physics sits alongside computer science, mathematics, and the, the business school. Uh, and we work uh, very much collaboratively with our colleagues in the earth and life sciences, uh, in particular, where our knowledge and technologies are applicable uh, in, in those areas. Uh, in, in my own department, um, the, the, the two main activities are in uh, space and materials uh, with a focus on the development of software and instrumentation uh, for example, working, solving problems with industry, within CPE, building instruments for space exploration uh, and developing materials for photovoltaics through Spark. Um, our colleagues in computer science are expert in robotics artificial intelligence, uh, machine learning, uh, and we're, we're involved with um, uh, Astute through the software engineering, which has been established at Bristwith uh, for uh, a long time. Okay. Kept it short. Yeah, no, thank you. That's excellent timing. Thank, thanks a lot. Thanks, Andy. And, and I should say that, you know, great. Aberystwyth wasn't involved in the first time round on the network, so it's great to, to see you involved this time. Uh, okay, so next I'm going to go to uh, John Platz at, at Cardiff Metropolitan. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Dean of the uh, School of Technologies at Cardiff Met. This is a new school. We were founded in 2018. Uh, I came in to, to build this school. I came from industry where I'd spent most of my life um, researching autonomous systems uh, in the defence sector. Um, we started with a group of computer scientists of around three, 300, with 300 students, about 15 staff. Uh, where we are at the moment, we've got about 1,200, 1,300 students, um, 65 staff, and I'd say about 55 of those are research active. Um, we, our target is to get above 2,000 students um, in two or three years' time, with about 100 staff, all of them will be research active. The school um, has most of its effort at the moment based on the uh, sort of technology, computer science, software engineering uh, side, but has uh, recently established an engineering capability and has two integrated master's courses. Um, in terms of our um, research 
uh, we've organized that in terms of clusters. So we have a cluster that is focused on AI, robotics and data science. Uh, and that sits around our Eureka Robotics Lab, which specializes in humanoid robotics. Um, we have uh, a cluster sitting around cybersecurity and information networks. Um, another that's focused on industry four and blockchain research. Um, we've also got a creative computer computing research center, uh, which in involves um, games, but also uh, visualization of, of data um, and, and collaborative um, applications of data. Uh, we've got a bioengineering research group. Um, and our nascent engineering capability is focused around electronics, uh, telecoms, uh, automation, and the internet of things. Thank you. Okay, but thank you very much, John. Uh, so I'm gonna to go to our, our second of the partners at Cardiff, uh, Sam Evans at, at Cardiff University. Thank you. So I'm Sam Evans. I'm the former head of the School of Engineering in Cardiff University. Um, our school pretty much does what it says on the tin, so we've got about 100 academic staff and about 1,700 students across all the main areas of engineering. Not computer science, which is a separate department for us, but we're, we're jumbled up together in the same building and we work with them all the time. Um, our main strategic research areas, as everybody else is saying, I think, too, are very much multidisciplinary, so across the traditional engineering disciplines, but also beyond that and, and collaborating with lots of other people, too. So civil infrastructure, which includes concrete, water, geotechnical, but also BIM, informatics, AI, um, compound semiconductors, RF electronics, microwaves, medical engineering, um, what we've we've called in the past smart engineering, which means informatics, robotics, human computer interaction, pervasive sensing, digital twins, all those kinds of things. And then sustainable energy in all its various aspects. And we're collaborating with lots of, well, probably all the organizations I think that are here in one way or another on different aspects of that. Thank, thank you very much, Sam, thank you. Um, so I now realise, and those of you who are, who are alert will have realised I've messed up my alphabetical order already. So I'm going to go back, uh, back one letter to Bangor, the Bs, uh, and, and, and ask Yestin, Yestin Pierce to say a few words. Excellent. Yes, Thanks, Lou. Yes, so excellent. you'll see we're, we're joined by a lot of colleagues from Bangor here across a, a couple of different schools, actually. If you like, the main thrust is in the School of Computer Science and Electronic Engineering, but we've also got people from the Smart Energy Efficiency Center, which has tentacles in multiple schools in, in the university. So starting with computer science, electronic engineering, let's name check a couple of the projects that are on the go. So there's the Nuclear Futures Institute, obviously related to the uh, Sayer Cymru. There's the Center for Photonic Expertise, SEEK, the Smart Energy Efficiency Center I've mentioned already. There's people who work with the Spark 2. You'll see some of my colleagues here already involved with that. We run the gamut really all the way from product design, innovation design thinking, that sort of thing, over on the sort of design thinking side of things, all the way through to micro machining, nanophotonics, digital signal processing. We've got a DSP center up in, in the Northwest. Artificial intelligence, human computer interface, data science, microwave engineering, medical engineering. We have quite a broad range of expertise across those ranges. I don't know whether some colleagues might want to pipe up if there's anything I've left out there. I think that that's the main business, if you like, in the School of Computer Science Electronic Engineering. I know there's some colleagues from other departments in the university who might want to pitch in as well. Okay, Th thank you very much, Yestin. Thank you for that. Um, okay, so I'm going to go now to another one of our, our, our new members, which is great to see, and ask Nigel Kopner of University of South Wales to say a few words. Thanks, Thanks yeah, I'm, sorry. yeah. I'm Nigel Kopner. I lead up the optical electronics research at the University of South Wales. But uh, within the computing and, and engineering and science faculty, just to let you know, within uh, the recent REF, we submitted around about 80 people uh, for research into, into the REF, which covers areas such as computing, maths, and engineering. In fact, our own engineering submission uh, doubled from 14, I think, in 2014 to, to 30 last year, or this year in March. Um, but the sort of areas we do cover, uh, we cover areas which uh, 
projects which are funded from FO, which include Flexis. Uh, we've got a project, recent project from ITRIC in the hydrogen technology and an anaerobic digestion and so on. And there's a, a complete new cluster set up, um, as you're probably aware from recent uh, media, called SWIC, which is collectively bringing together organisation to, to see how hydrogen can impact the, the business going forward. Um, within the optoelectronics, we've, we deal with all sorts of technologies uh, from telecoms to uh, metrology to biotechnology. And we've recently, obviously, over the last few years, innovated a few, few concepts. One of them is developing new uh, silver nanostructures on top of, say, light emitting diodes, which improves the efficiency about 50% by removing total internal reflection. We've also had, I'm just bringing out some of the um, some key innovations over the last few years. Another one in hydrogen has been the uh, manganese hydride mesh, which is basically is able to store hydrogen safely and release it safely and provide you know, transport ranges, mileage ranges of in excess of 500 miles. And that's, and that's able to do this in a way that actually dissipates the heat in terms of loading up the hydrogen into the mesh and then releasing it. And recently, uh, I've uh, licensed our technology to a major corporation in, in North America. And recently, we are moving increasingly into uh, another uh, area of technology, which is every industry linked into, say, Tata Steel and electrical steels, all feeding into Boris Johnson's mission of uh, electrification by 2030. And we're increasingly developing new ideas around electrical steel, which are on ice silicon, which gives great efficiency, providing special uh, polishes to, to the steels. Uh, but importantly, in all this, it, what it comes down to, as you're aware here, that uh, a lot of these processes and this new technology rely on uh, the manufacturability as well. So, for instance, um, you know, if you want to cut some of these steels with ice silicon, they're extremely fragile and brittle. So you need to develop new processes for doing that. Otherwise, all this wonderful efficiency gains in, in the motors and generators just don't become realised in, in the yields required for commercial reality. So there's a lot of work that optics and and ways we can add value to to the heavy industry, which previously we would have thought that we wouldn't be able to apply value. So there's another there's another one which is for Tata Steel. You know we've got uh, a new research going on to capture the carbon dioxide coming out of the chimney stacks in, in Port Albert, and then convert it into into methane, for instance, or even the hydrogen which is released to then pipe that back into the line or to 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 use to to fuel cars and so on. So there's a, Increasingly, there's a fantastic synergy and co collaborations going on with industry, which are leading through to some disruptive technology. And it's, it's great that this NRN is actually continuing. So I think this could actually be the catalyst for the future we're going forward. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very, very much, Nigel. Thank you. Uh, okay, so next is Richard Morgan, uh, University, Trinity, uh, University of Wales, Trinity St. David's. Thank you, Hugh. Um, yeah, Richard Morgan, I'm a senior lecturer based within UWTSD School of Engineering. In addition to my teaching duties, I'm actively involved with development and management of a number of funded uh, knowledge exchange projects, smart partnerships, smart expertise projects. My focus is very much monitoring system optimization and how digitalization can be used to support this. Um, we've also have got strength and experience in the areas of non-destructive testing and evaluation and colleagues have undertaken numerous uh, KTP projects, smart partnerships, etc. within in, in those areas as well. Um, we've recently secured some um, EPSOC fund, connected everything funding to expand some work which we undertook last year, which is looking at the development of AI enabled augmented reality systems for defect detection and for localization of um, features that are critical to quality within manufacturing operations. Um, we've got significant experience and capabilities in additive manufacturing technologies through UWTSD's uh, component batch manufacturer Wales, or CBM Wales, um, with a particular interest in how these technologies can be used for medical and veterinary applications. And finally, we've um, currently we've got a suite of WEFO funded industry for digitalization projects, which cover R&D, uh, and educational provision associated with those areas. So these are running under the banner of um, MADE or the uh, Manufacturing Advanced Design Engineering. Thank you very much, Richard. Thank you. Uh, so for the last of our university partners, uh, I'm going to go to Caroline Gray at, at Wrexham Glindu. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Yeah, Caroline Gray. I'm the director of the Optic Technology Centre, which is part of Wrexham Glyndor's extended campus network. 
primarily uh, focused on industry and academia connections. It's the uh, um, Centre for Photonics Expertise home and uh, uh, the lead partner in that project. So very pleased to be uh, seeing our other CPE partners here in this network as well. It shows that photonics is leading the way. Um, the Optic Centre is, is very much um, a conduit between the academic activities of, of Glyndor and other partners and industrial partners. Uh, it's also home to uh, Swansea University's Centre for Solar Energy Research, uh, the CESA Group under the SPOC2 programme. It's also, um, we have a specialist group in optical metrology, uh, very high level bespoke opt optical metrology, opt large optics manufacture. So we have full production and manufacturing capability for um, large optics up to two meters. It's the only one in the country. We also have uh, a um, dedicated research facility for vacuum thin film coatings, uh, which is, is part of, has come in under the Center for Photonics Expertise. Uh, but that's now available for all research partners across Wales to, uh, to tap into and industrial partners, which is, is pretty exciting for all of us. Uh, Glendore also very active in composite materials development, microwave composites, and um, a lot of computer activity around, particularly around cybersecurity is the strength at Glendore. Um, we have a, a strong focus on forming industrial partners. The centre itself is an incubation centre as well, so it's home to incubating companies, as you can see the building behind me. So it's very much um, a connection there between um, our uh, FAST faculty, which is a faculty of um, uh, art, science and technology, which encompasses uh, the, the engineering and uh, technology, computing and arts department. So uh, leading the way on that um, on that particular grouping around the STEAM and STEM activities as well. So that's pretty much an introduction to Glyndor's activities and the Optic Technology Centre. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, so for the last of our partners, so, so I've been through the university partners, but we have an, a further partner who's, who's remained with us since the first round of the NRN, which is great to see, and that's TWI Limited. So TWI Limited really helped us in our first iteration linked to, to companies. Uh, and uh, I invite Dr. Ian Nicholson to say a few words about that. Yeah, hi all. Um, yeah, so I've been at TWI for 15 years. My background was software and electronics and gluing different disciplines together to form products. I say was, I'm now more of a manager. So myself and one other manager, we have 50 persons on site in TWI Port Talbot. Uh, where we offer a range of different expertise related to non-destructive testing. So we're like the center of excellence for digital X-ray and computer tomography, advanced uh, ultrasonics, electromagnetics, and pretty much the application of it. So using robots and automated manipulators. Uh, and we have recently, I guess like following many other uh, industries, we're moving into digital, specifically artificial intelligence for automated uh, inspection and looking at big data and digital twins. And yeah, as uh, Hugh mentioned, we're the only one who's not a university. And you may wonder what on earth are we doing with this uh, almost like a university collaboration, but actually we do undertake quite a lot of um, innovation research, not fundamental, more like say four to eight uh, TRL level, but we have 3000 members like representing industry. So aerospace, oil and gas, automotive to, to name but a few. So we're sort of, pretty much like the funnel to try and feed back some of the um, the real challenges that companies have that we all could try and solve. And actually the last NRN collaboration actually worked out very well because um, it, it, it meant that we could speak more with different universities. We had a collaboration. We also employed um, a fellow via NRN uh, post that NRN project. That fellow is now with us as a permanent member of staff. We still have very good links with that university or Swansea University, in fact, um, so I know it actually sort of helped us plant an acorn and grow it. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do with, the, with you guys is hopefully plant some more acorns and collaborate with your good selves. That's, that's me finished. Thank you very much, Ian. And, and, and a nice way to finish. Um, 
listening to all of that, uh, you know, I, I hope everyone can see there's a huge spread of, of expertise across Wales. There's lots of common interest areas, clearly. Uh, and, and, you know, today is just an introduction. So if you have been listening to that and you've picked up, so, oh, that sounds interesting, uh, you know, another in university other than your own. The aim of the network is to bring people together. So, so if there are areas that you've heard mentioned you'd like to hear more, let us know because it's our job to bring people together and, and start to work on, on these areas of common interest. Okay, so th thank you all, uh, everyone, uh, for, for, for going through that. Uh, so, so our next our next item really is to pick up on on what I said right at the start. You know, we're in a very different funding landscape than we would have just a few years ago. Lots and lots of changes, lots and lots of new initiatives coming along, and so we did want to sort of present s some update on, on on at least one or two of those today. And so I'm delighted to say uh, that Bodwin Morgan, who head of Horizon Europe unit at Welsh Government is here uh, and Bodwin's going to talk us through you know the opportunities there are in Horizon Europe whilst we're not in the EU anymore uh, fantastic news that the UK government is committing has committed us rather you know to being part of the Horizon Europe program so we, we are still all able to bid for funding from the EU uh, for our, our research and so uh, let me hand over uh, and welcome Bodwin thank you thank you very much Yes, I'm very pleased to be here. And um, my, as you mentioned, my main point really is to direct attention towards the Horizon Europe uh, programme for those who aren't familiar with it. And indeed for those who are familiar with it, because it is, I understand it is difficult to get the time to, to look into these things with uh, marking and such going on at the moment. Um, but why Horizon Europe? Um, it's, it's a very large programme. And as you said, we have access to it. Um, it's £100 billion, pounds, more or less, when you include the UK contribution um, at a time for, for the whole of Europe over, or in fact, it's larger than Europe, over uh, seven years. In the context in Wales of not knowing about the Shared Prosperity Fund, our structural funds are pretty much committed and uh, will run to 2023. Um, but we haven't got uh, any information from the UK yet on the Shared Prosperity Fund uh, to share with you. Um, UKRI has made a lot of commitments recently and um, indications are uh, there isn't a lot in the short term, uh, although I'll, I'll leave that to the experts on that particular funding source. And of course, the cuts to development aid that have been in the press um, suggest those areas are, are tight as well. And in the context of COVID, um, it's obviously going to be, um, uh, um, there's obviously going to be comp competition for funds. So Horizon Europe comes into this context with um, a, a sort of open-ended offer really. Yes, it's very competitive, um, but it's very competitive. Um, obviously it depends on the quality of the bid. So we need to do everything we can to put in the, the right bids. And this, there is, is success still happening for the UK. Um, our drop off since Brexit was mainly because of the lack of applications going in rather than because of any um, problems with quality or discrimination. And we can see now in the last European Research Council grants, the UK won more of those grants than any other country, 25% uh, of them. And in social sciences, 38% of them. So it is possible to get back into the game. The programmes are now out, so it is possible to browse those on the EU funding and tenders portal. Um, so as one action, I would like I would really like people to have a look at the calls that are available there. You're very welcome to call us up if you want some initial orientation, but there's a whole load of other support as well. The, the people in the universities, the research offices, there is a European liaison officer in every university um, that knows these programmes. There's Welsh Higher Education Brussels in Brussels. Um, there are, of course, the national contact points are in the UK who specialise in each different part of the programme. And online, there are, are plenty of resources. I can put some, some of these together for you. Um, for example, the KTN has done a lot of webinars. There are uh, coming up. There are information days on the different parts of the, the program. In fact, they're and they're happening now. I think there was one this morning, and the 
the matchmaking event from that will be on the 1st of July. Uh, that's specifically on a digital and industry. Uh, I'm pleased to see um, Professor Claypole and the Semiconductor Catapult have signed up for that, but I'll, I'll put the event in the chat in case anyone else wants to later. Um, I suppose I should say a bit more in, about the setup of the program for those who aren't familiar with it, just to, to give some general orientation. There are three pillars to it. Uh, the first is excellent science, which is about bottom-up ideas, careers, uh, research and mobility. There are, you can apply to that for doctoral training centres, for to bring in fellows. They're coming up in October, I'd suggest. Look out, look outside uh, the UK to see if there are any fellows, uh, postdoctoral fellows you'd like to, to bring in to the network. Um, and uh, staff exchanges, and of course the Research Council, which has its three modes of, of um, um, starter, consolidator, and advanced. In the, in the second pillar, uh, the focus is on fulfilling the European Union's priorities, uh, policy priorities, which are to a large extent the same as the UK's and the same as Wales. Anyone reading these will see the drivers behind behind these uh, these research calls, and it, they cover a lot of what you've been talking about today. Uh, they're collaborative; that you need, in a way, the, the dream team that is going to do this at a European level. Um, but there are there are calls on health, society, security, digital, climate, um, mobility, etc. Um, indeed, um, yes, I had plenty of. Uh, of light bulbs uh, coming on when when the speakers were talking earlier. You know, there are a few calls on steel, um, plenty on on manufacturing and process industries. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning partnerships. In some parts of the program, partnerships, in particular industrial partnerships, will be getting about half the funding in Horizon Europe and distributing that themselves in line with industrial priorities. So, so there are two things I'd like to mention in, in terms of partnerships. One is um, we do need to build relationships with these partnerships and understand what they're doing and have people in, in influential positions in them. Um, these include things like, um, there's one on AI data and robotics, there's Photonics. Many of you will be familiar with Photonics 21, for example, which is in the core of that. Uh, clean av aviation which the network I'm sure has had funding from before in terms of Clean Sky 2, uh, hydrogen, digital technologies, key digital technologies, which again fits with our semiconductor uh, expertise. So there's plenty of there in terms of general engagement, but also then watching out for the calls when they come through. Um, in terms of what we offer in Welsh Government, uh, we are part of the UK National Contact Point Network. Um, but we also have a small fund that I'd like to uh, to mention at the moment because we have a call out for that. It's um, when I say small, it's looking for seeding really and small actions to unblock the the access to these grants. Um, generally, around five thousand pounds per project, around a sixty thousand pound budget at the moment. We're looking for we, we've got two strands open at the moment. One is generally for Horizon Europe. Um, we welcome applications by the 20th of August for ideas to develop bids, to develop networks, develop connections with the, the, the real movers and shakers in the program, uh, possibly training. Um, it's fairly open, really. And the second strand is money that we've um, received from our international relations team to help deliver the Ireland Action Plan, Ireland Wales Action Plan. So if there are any actions that are specifically with Ireland, you kind of get two bites of the cherry there in that um, it's, it could go into either theme. Um, I don't know how we're doing for time, but um, in terms of practicalities, I'll mention quickly, the funding is fairly generous in these. It's it, about as generous as you can get, really. It's 100% uh, grant for direct costs, generally, plus 25% for overheads. That goes down to 75%, so 70% if you're close to market and uh, innovation activities. 
uh, or for for the private sector and um, and the assessment criteria are excellence impact and innovation very quite easy to remember quite a nice uh, um, triple there in terms of excellence for example what is the the state of the art is this going beyond the state of the art do you know what the competition is um, impact um, and I've seen this in a lot of evaluations recently they really want to see the flow through to the impact on the policy they want to see all the uh, the stakeholders engaged um, how is this going to scale up replicate um, what do the end users uh, think of it how is it going to actually be implemented across uh, across Europe or the world and then implementation are the is the time allocated to the tasks correctly is there coherence in terms of the work plan um, and, and what is the track record of, of the partners and the researchers? I think I'll draw it to a close there and I'm very happy to take questions. Thank you very much, Bodwin. Um, and, and just to, to reiterate, and as Bodwin said there, you know, many of us, you know, we're, we're busy in universities. We have many hats to wear. We're teaching, we're, we're organizing, we're administrating as well as trying to get research done. Uh, but there are people out there to help you uh, and, and we, through, through ourselves and through people like Bodwin, you know, obviously there is help uh, to look at um, making major bids to, to fund such as th this one. Uh, we are also in the networks at the moment, working with the other two uh, research networks to try and bring toward, uh, forward an event where we might look at topics that cross different discipline areas. Uh, and so again, if, if you're out there thinking, oh, I've got great ideas, but I need to bring in some life scientists or environmentalists or whatever it might be, Again, the, the secondary network really, that's our role, is to try and help you link up if, if you think you need to talk to experts outside of your immediate areas. Um, okay, uh, so again, please put questions in, into chat and, it, and also after the event, uh, you know, we, we can forward questions on as well. So, so thank you very much again, Baldwin. Thank you. Okay, so in the in the second piece of, of just trying to think about uh, you know where future funding is going, uh, I'm going to go back to to share screen, and okay, so I hope now you can see my uh, PowerPoint again, and this time you can see the whole PowerPoint, not not lots, lots of different comment lines. Um, so so for the second piece here, I'm just going to provide a short uh, update on the Welsh Innovation Network. Uh, so, so this is a, a new network. Uh, it was, uh, it had a preview event last week. Now, many of you may have gone to the event. So, so if you did go to the event uh, for the next five or, or 10 minutes or so, you're gonna have me summarizing uh, the event, but um, I'm sure not all of you went to it. So for those of you who, who didn't go, uh, I just want to sort of give an update so you're aware of what, what this network is uh, and, and what its aims are. Um, and so, as you can see on, on the logo there, this, uh, this is a network created by University of Wales, so the, the umbrella organisation that covers all the, all the Welsh HEIs. Uh, and what the network is, is, is basically uh, a significant effort to, to put Wales at the front of, of UK innovation plans. So it's really to ensure there's visibility uh, for us in Wales, you know, in this new environment. So I talked about, uh, you know, the UK government in Westminster uh, really looking at its strategic priorities. Uh, and we're all aware of things like the levelling up agenda, uh, the wish to, to put investment and funding outside of sort of the southeast, uh, also sort of renewed um, wish from government to get engaged with industrial policy and, and to have government uh, shaping of that. Uh, and so I think it's, it's, it's really important that Wales is seen within that landscape. Uh, and many of people are, do, are trying to do that, obviously. Uh, but this Wales Innovation Network is, is one of the vehicles, or, or I suspect will become the main vehicle by which the University of Wales group really tries to push Wales to, to the forefront. So, so the event uh, last week, uh, it was hosted by the Learned Society of Wales. Uh, the network has some initial funding from HEFQ, so it, it got support from HEFQ. Uh, and on the day, they were supporting sort of speeches and videos from quite a, a, an, a, an influential and impressive list of people. So Vaughan Gething, who's now uh, Minister for Economy in Wales, uh, Simon Hart, Secretary of State for Wales, Isabel Stephen, uh, Director of UKRI, 
uh, uh, Mark Damon, who's, who's Executive Vice President of, of TALIS, uh, and as you can see there as well, Tony Danker, Director General of the CBI. So, so very influential people uh, putting their support to it and, and, and backing the network. Uh, there was also a keynote address from Professor Graham Reed. So Professor Graham Reed is uh, a distinguished academic who's who's been involved in a number of reports that have been influential in, in shaping the research environment within Wales. Uh, and he recently, uh, he the sorry, Universities Wales commissioned a report from Professor Reed called Strength in Diversity. You can see the front page of it. And again, on our um, network website, and we'll make sure we've got links to these documents if, if you do wish to sort of trace them up later on. Uh, so Strength in Diversity was a report really putting the case forward for the Welsh universities to work collaboratively wherever possible uh, and to sort of build visibility and capacity and strength through that, that partnership. So in a way, what we've been doing with the Circumbi networks for many years, but now at a sort of whole institution level rather than in specific topic areas like engineering or life sciences or uh, low carbon. So just a, a few highlight points that, that I, I took away, which I thought you know is worth highlighting to you today. Uh, from, from the presentation from uh, Graham Reed, uh, a very clear view by, by uh, his view in, in that obviously we're, we're losing access to the European Regional Development Fund. Uh, there's something called the UK Shared Prosperity Fund, which is in some way meant to sort of take take its place within the UK. Uh, but there's not likely to be a devolution of that fund to the control of Welsh government. That's likely, highly likely to stay within the control of UK government. And so the flow, the way that flow uh, funds flow in to address regional development, it will be very different. Um, just as this uh, initiative in Wales, across the UK, there are now quite a growing number of groups and networks being formed across universities, really, I guess, trying to try achieve a similar thing to what we're doing in Wales to ensure visibility and to ensure significant capacity in, in going for these funds and, and making sure that, that people are seen in this new landscape. Uh, so the Welsh Innovation Network, as I say, it's, it's at a launch stage. Uh, and so really at the moment, the aim seems to be uh, to, to streamline collaboration. So to basically have a number of agreed protocols sorted out between the eight universities so that when collaborative efforts get proposed, a lot of the background work is already done. There are protocols already in place so that people can move rapidly uh, you know, to, to achieve things. So, so for example, the kind of things that are being considered is to have IP allocation agreements or, or pre-done, uh, agreements in terms of where funding might be distributed across different institutions, uh, the ability to use uh, facilities across universities and have some kind of shared infrastructure. Um, and what, what I found was quite notable that, that Graham Reed went out of his way to sort of identify three risks. So obviously he presented the ideas and, and the benefits of, of having this Welsh Innovation Network, but also identified three risks. So I, I thought it was worth putting those up here. So you can see there the risk insufficient scale. So he very much uh, highlighted the need to think big, to have ambition, uh, to put forward, you know, big ideas which are going to tackle, uh, you know, the big challenges of the day. So you know, low carbon or, or climate change emergency, uh, healthcare post-COVID, things like this. So, uh, the second one was really uh, what he termed insufficient substance. Uh, and I think this really was, was a, um, a push from him for this network to really tackle the, the difficult things that usually are talked about, but don't usually get done. So, you know, to really do have a, a way of sharing funding across the division and an agreement on how that might be done, agree how I, IP might be allocated. Uh, and so really to sort of, get to the nitty gritty and agreements and documentation around this, rather than, as I suspect in the past, lots of efforts to look at collaboration and, and lots of sort of talking around, but maybe not so much output. And then the final point that, that he uh, he made 
uh, is don't sit around and wait. So this really comes back to, to uh, the change in the way funds are going to be dis distributed. Uh, and, and there won't be a formulaic funding that's going to ensure automatically that Wales gets a, you know, a fixed percentage. We very much are in, in a competitive environment with other regions in the UK. Uh, so, so really, uh, he was pushing us in Wales to really see that and, and make sure we're ready to go with really strong proposals uh, from, from strong groupings so that we, you know, we, can, we can fight in that, in that competitive environment. Um, I've put another couple of points here. These these aren't particularly they're, they're my thoughts for what they're worth. So they came to me, you know, in in terms, re, uh, sorry, reading, sitting there and, and and listening to people on the day. Uh, the whole focus, I think, on on place based funding across the UK obviously does necessitate quite integrated approaches. So I think, you know, we're we're looking at a future major biz that not only have universities on board, but must have industry, and that won't be surprising, but also I think to a large degree, we'll also need local and national government involvement as well. Things like uh, local industrial uh, groupings like the city deals, you know, the Cardiff and Swansea Bay city deals, North Wales coast uh, deals. So all of these groups are gonna have to be involved in large proposals that go forward. So. You know, seeing the Wales Innovation Network, it clearly sets out to be able to do that, to be a vehicle to, to bring people together in that way. Uh, and, and so, you know, I, I think it, it should be very welcome. Uh, the other point, my final point you can see there is, uh, obviously, we're a research network. We've been driving collaborative work across Wales for, what, well, since 2014. Uh, so, you know, you might wonder wh where do we sit in or fit in, in in our engineering research network compared to this Welsh Innovation Network? Well. That, that's at the moment that's not clear because the Wales Innovation Network has just been launched. Uh, but but my personal view on it is we definitely have a role to play here. The Wales Innovation Network is very much uh, a top-down initiative. It's come forward from the uh, vice chancellors and, and pro vice chancellors of the universities. Uh, and, and as I said, I, that's very welcome. I think what the Circumbri networks can do is provide that bottom-up linkage. We're here with a lot of experience. Uh, we know how to coordinate projects, as we've been hearing earlier this afternoon. We know where the expertise within our particular sector sits across the different Welsh universities. So I think that the, the circumbri networks can really provide the coordination, the support to ensure delivery on the ground so that whatever the strategy of the Welsh Innovation Network is as it develops, our networks can be there ensuring that we've got the capacity to, to help deliver that. Uh, and, and we'll certainly uh, be engaging with, with the Welsh Innovation Network as we go forward, you know, to, to promote what, what, what we're able to provide. And I think this is an area where, as I said, right at the start of the day, this is where we really do need your views, your thoughts. Um, you know, ideally, we're br brilliant if you can put something today into chat, but it doesn't have to be today, obviously, over the next weeks, months, etc. Being able to get the view of our engineering network to be able to put forward a unified view, a strong, well thought out case. Uh, that's what we need as we sort of see where our network sits amongst all these other uh, initiatives. OK, so that was just a, a quick uh, overview of that for those of you who might not have been to that event. Um, I've got the last uh, section of the day, so we're, we're running fairly OK for time. And we we'll still have some time to pick up on some of the questions at the end. Uh, I just want to finish the last 10 minutes of, of me talking uh, is really to, to flag up how you can get involved with the network this time round. So, uh, so the first two ones you can see here, uh, we will be launching what we're calling a catalyst fund. Uh, so these are going to be a small awards uh, up to about £1,500. Really, the point here is to help you organise meetings and events to bring people together. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming here that as we move through the summer and into the autumn, COVID restrictions are going to be lifting. We are going to start being returned to something like normality, actually have meetings where people to gather together in real rooms instead of online. Um, and so hopefully over the remainder of this year and into 2022, uh, we'll be able to support things like that. So, so the idea here is, is to help you bring people together to, to look at a, a collaborative idea, which might then develop into a, a funding bid. Uh, so, so there's money there to fund some travel 
funding, uh, maybe some consumables, uh, meal on the day, etc. that sort of thing. Um, we'll put details uh, on our website and we'll also email details actually. It'll be a very simple one page application form. Uh, and the other thing I'd like to flag on that is if you are thinking about organizing a meeting, then we will be able to, from the network as well, if, if needed, we'll be able to provide some administrative and organizational support around the meeting as well. We're happy, happy to do that where we're able to. Uh, so that's the Catalyst Fund. The other uh, initiative that I, I very much wanted to flag up today is we're shortly going to undertake what I'm, I would call a community consultation. Uh, this is around an idea which for the moment I'm calling the Wales Engineering Research Facility. Uh, and what we want to do is really to uh, explore the, the, the level of interest in establishing a shared facilities uh, across Welsh HEIs in, in our area in engineering. Uh, so the idea here is um, to look at creating a structure by which we can manage access to uh, other universities, lab laboratories, equipment, uh, so that we can make sure that wherever you are in, in the Welsh sector, HEI sector, you can access facilities at other universities if you think that they'd be really useful to you. Uh, this has come up a number of times. It came up in, in when we had the old NRN, and all too often people who run the facilities in our universities are very open to having external users. The issue usually comes into one, just organizing that access and two, being able to cover the cost, because we do realize that when someone comes in to use a, a facility for an afternoon or whatever, uh, there are costs that, that need to be covered. So the idea of this Wales Engineering Research Facility is that it would be uh, something that would enable organization of, of access where there are there's spare capacity but also would uh, potentially seek funding so that we could cover direct costs of that usage of, of labs and facilities by, by external users. So at the moment, as I say, it's a consultation. Uh, it is something that's come up before as, as uh, members of the network would see as useful. Uh, so basically what we need to do now is, is get a broader canvassing of opinion on that uh, and then to build a, build a case, build a sort of position paper uh, to map out what that might look like, what level of funding might be needed. So, so please do respond. We'll send a questionnaire out very soon to you all. Uh, so please do put your, your thoughts and views in on that, please. Okay, so the last slide for me, um, in terms of planned events, so again, as I say, we're, we're very much looking forward to the possibility of having physical meetings uh, in the later half of this year. Uh, and so I'll just briefly Tool. you can see some of the ideas here uh, we'll have workshops to go alongside those catalyst funds so hopefully some of you will be bidding for funds and you, you'll be happy to organize some some investigating workshops to bring people together uh, we're going to uh, organize a distinguished lecture series where each of our eight partners will, will host uh, an external speaker uh, and, and that'll be an NRN sort of badged or uh, engineering research network badged uh, lecture series uh one of the things that in the last round of the nrn was very useful to people was networking events uh and as ian at twi said you know from little uh, acorns larger things can grow and so we will be having events again which try to bring together industry folks with uh, academics so you can start to make those linkages uh and, and look for opportunities for, for joint work uh, as I already said, we will also look to have meetings with the other research networks where we can find areas of, of overlap. Uh, and then the last two are things that we, we didn't do so much of, we did a bit of before, but we, we, we'd like to, I think, increase what we do. Uh, one is really around what I'm calling engineers and society. So things that aren't technical meetings about you know, technology or, or processes or, or manufacturing, but really looks at engineering in that wider context. So they might cover things like diversity in, in, in engineering, uh, ethics issues or, or just general public engagement. Um, so we'll be looking to do events like that. And then the last one there is something that we discussed with the Royal Academy of Engineering a few years ago and, and didn't get around to organising. Uh, but we do have the opportunity working together with the, the Royal Academy to host uh, an event with them up in London. So again, for the want of a better title at the moment, I called it Wales in London. But we should look, I think, 
as we move into 2022 to use that platform to be able to present ourselves to the UK uh, in a meeting up in London. Uh, what that is about, again, is very open. So again, as with all of these events, and indeed, if you'd like to see events that I haven't put here, that you think we should be doing, please let us know and, and, and send your views in. Uh, so the final uh, thing you can see there is around communications. Uh, if I just bring it up, hopefully, yeah, you can see. So, so we have our website. It's the same web address as we had before. So www.ernw.ac.uk, Engineering Research Network Wales. Uh, we've, we've updated the front page. You'll see uh, some of the old content is still there. Uh, so details on all of the research projects that we ran the first time round, we'll, you'll still find there. But what I wanted to highlight today is the news and events page so you can see we've got news of our events but also other events uh and so i know there's lots of sites to do this but if you know we're trying to as far as we can bring together lots of events that might be of interest to you and you can find them on on the one page there so you can see you can you can have a look through those uh later uh and in general what we need is your input news stories that you might have uh you know either to go onto the website or we do run a, a twitter feed so if you have any stories events things you want to publicize please do let us know and we'll make sure we we get that out through through the various communication channels that, that we have okay i'm going to stop sharing uh there and uh let me go back to gallery view uh and so we've got about 15 minutes uh, left, which is which is good. Uh, so thank you, everyone, uh, all the contributors. Uh, excellent timing from all. So thank you very much. Uh, so I'm just going to go into the chat uh, and see what um, is coming in here, uh, and and see if I can pick up on some of your, some of your thoughts. Okay, so. Um, so Baldwin has, has put a, um, a, a link uh, into there. So again, you, you can find that in the chat, but again, we'll, we'll make that available uh, afterwards. Um, okay. Okay, and there's some thoughts coming around um, shared facilities uh, and, and, and suggestion of a Wales National Lab. Um, which would be very nice, yes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll just read out some of the comments and then they might not be questions, right? So, so re-win, have we thought about a Wales National Lab modelled on Harwell that could host major shared facilities for Wales and UK? Um, so something, something, yeah, to complement Hugh's idea of a shared facilities in the university. So, so basically going something a, a level higher in a way there. So. Um, yeah, I think that's a very interesting uh, thought and comment and, and particularly harking back to Professor Graham Reed saying, uh, be ambitious, then we probably should be thinking uh, around things at that scale. Um, collaboration, uh, this is for, sorry, I, I'm, I'm really down. So that was from Richard, Richard Palmer on, on the idea of Awareness National Lab. Thank you, Richard. Uh, so from Alison McMillan, collaboration, uh, I think we've gone beyond small collaborations. Of course, they're still valuable. I'm thinking of Team Human. Team Human has had to face COVID and we should be building the infrastructure to cross disciplines and think fully internationally to solve big societal problems. So again, you know, a link again, which is obviously coming through a bit, quite a bit here now about really needing not to think small anymore. And as, as, as you say, I seem to really think large on that. And again, as I said, I think we're here today as the Engineering Research Network, but please do in your mind sort of think of the Circumry networks as a group. We're in regular contact, uh, weekly contact with the other research networks. So for these really big, all encompassing uh, project ideas, we are able and we should be looking to bring all three networks, which are probably bringing us to a thousand or more academics uh, across Wales to really have, have some big challenge um, things to tackle. Uh, engineering in society this is from David Rees. Engineers in society will you engage with the IET and other professional institutions? Yes, yes, we will. Uh, at the moment, we're we're on a very first phase of that. We're, we're talking to various institutions and groups around Wales. 
Uh, but as I've said, we have in the past been uh, quite involved with the Royal Academy of Engineering uh, and we re-engage re with them and also with the other uh, professional engineering bodies. So we certainly will do that. Um, Ian Nicholson, uh, can there be an overarching NRN directory uh, dot website page listing key interests of each partner, including department and contact details? Yes, indeed, we will. We, we, we have a um, we already had a, a wish to have a page where you might find out about funding opportunities uh, and have links to other organisations, you know, things like the Road Academy of Engineering. Uh, but we'll also make sure there is a, a, a dedicated area where hopefully as streamlined as we can, uh, you can see what you heard about today, that you can see where those major strengths lie. Uh, also linked to this would be these ideas around a shared research facility so that not only you'd be able to see the expertise of the people in, in the different places, but also their capacity, their, their, um, their infrastructure and, and uh, research capacity, which you might want to engage with as well. So we definitely do that. Uh, Yestin, RAN for outreach engagement too. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Yestin. Um, Okay, so Philip Catherwood says, who is the point of contact for the Wales Innovation Network, please? Uh, I don't have one yet. There was a, they, they put out a job advert uh, only a few weeks ago uh, for, for a director or a manager for the network. Uh, so I presume they will be, uh, that position will be announced very soon. So once they're in post, that they will be the point of contact. We'll certainly make uh, contact with with that person as soon as they're in post. So I don't think there's anyone at the moment, but we will keep you uh, informed on that. Uh, from Chris Morgan's, what would be useful indeed is that the NRN in conjunction with the eight universities develop a research capability map. So again, you know, this is another point which someone else had brought up. So clearly we, we, we will do this. Um, uh, and also obviously once, once we put something up, invite comments and, and queries because something like a research capability map isn't set in stone obviously it's something it evolves uh, constantly uh, so once we have something like that uh, please do uh, help us keep it up to date and, and topical as, as things change in, in your various places okay so thank thank you hazel hazel hung uh, at the center for photonics expertise uh, and a link there again, uh, if you want to find out more. And again, this is the kind of thing obviously people are asking for, links to these various research groupings that we have and clusters. We'll make sure that they're, they're very visible on our, on our, our page. Uh, and then a bit more fr from Caroline on, on the CP network. Uh, so uh, it's linking university expertise and business groups across Wales uh, and, and looking at that partnership, linking photonic strengths uh, and Welsh companies. Um, to form a, a virtual natural national facility. So again, obviously I'll pick up with that with Caroline. It, it would be good to find out more, Caroline, uh, it, to pick up the ideas that I'm sort of uh, keen to investigate in terms of virtual facilities, where why we, we can get um, synergy through, from bringing what we have in Wales together for all. Uh, and again, from Sandra Esteves, or Esteves, uh, linking with the Welsh National Lab, which might be uh, relevant. So again, I'll follow up that link as well and, and, and find out more from, from that. Uh, okay. Um, are there any other questions from today? Uh, thank you for all, uh, for, for those input. Um, uh, and I think it's good to see, it's good to see people um, not disagreeing too much with the, the kind of initiatives we're, we're thinking about at the moment. Um, I think for, for me to, to, to finish off is really to, to reiterate again, really, um, please, please do uh, engage wherever you, you, you feel a need. Uh, the more we can get views from the network, the better. Uh, and as I said right at the start, uh, whilst we don't have seven million pounds this time around, which would have been very, 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 very nice. I think the important thing is that we do have funding to be here as a network so we can make our voice heard. So. You know, within Wales, within the Welsh Innovation Network, within you know, Shared Prosperity Fund, etc., all of these initiatives, there is really no excuse if, if engineering in Wales doesn't come up 
with uh, you know a very strong push uh, uh, and, and initiatives because we are here in this network we know each other really well uh, and so we, we should be making sure our voice is, is very clearly heard I think so, so that's really the bottom line of, of what we really need to do I think over the next year or so okay I'm just checking are there any more uh, Final comments, or if anyone, indeed, if anyone wants to, to say anything, uh, you are able to. It's it's a meeting rather than a webinar. So uh, before before we sign out, if anyone wants to, to say any final thoughts or words, uh, please do so now. No, I think uh, everyone's ready to go and have their afternoon cup of tea, I think. Uh, okay, so thank you very much. For coming along has been brilliant it's been really excellent to have our first meeting relaunched with 80 to 90 participants i think we had today so that's a really good number i'm very pleased with that uh, and i hope to see many of you uh, in further events uh, and i hope to see many of you actually at your home institutions uh, as we are able to travel around wales again very soon so again thank you very much for this afternoon uh, and goodbye <laughs>